you know, classic type bootleg games like Sonic Adventure 4, uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Jackie Chan, or even Pokemon Stadium on the Genesis. Our protagonist of this legend claims that they usually find these kind of games online, but this time, <laughs> this time they found gold. They found a physical copy of this cartridge of Pokemon Black. Now, it didn't have any kind of telltale signs where it would normally have, you know, the little sticker on the front where it would be, you know, Pokemon red, yellow, blue, whatever. It was an actual, like, full, I mean, retail, but still a full physical copy of a bootleg game, which is really rare to find, at least so this person states. So he takes it home, pops it in his Game Boy, and tests it out. You know, thinking that it's just gonna be like a hacked version of the game where you've got, you know, you've got a Charmander level 100, 99 rare candies, 99 Master Balls, and you've got Mewtwo or whatever. But, what he got, oh, what he got was much, much more sinister. The game starts with the familiar intro video of Gengar and Nidorino battling and Nidorino jumping in at Gengar. All plays as normal. But when our protagonist presses the A button to go to the main title page is when he knows that something is really wrong with this outside of, you know, jet black game cartridge. Instead of having, you know, red standing at the front and it says, you know, Pokemon Fire Red, and you've got the Pokemon cycling behind you, or behind the, behind red, it was just the player character, red, standing there with, instead of Pokemon Red version, it just said Pokemon Black. And the Pokemon that would normally cycle behind didn't. There was nothing there. Could that be a little bit of foreshadowing for what's to come in this? Who knows? But we'll find out. Pressing start, our player starts the game as normal. It goes through the intro video of Professor Oak introducing you to the world of Pokemon and kind of showing you what they look like. And then our player just Goes through like normal, names himself, names his rival because Oak is an absolutely terrible grandpa and can't remember his only grandson's name. And nothing seems amiss at all throughout the entire beginning of the game. Everything plays out like normal until you get to Professor Oak's lab where you meet your rival for the first time. So he picks his Pokemon like normal, you know, Charmander, Squirter, Squirter, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur, and the rival picks, you know, the Pokemon that's strong against yours. After beating the rival, our player checks his Pokemon to see their stats, just to see, you know, after they leveled up the first time, seeing what's what, any difference, if it all plays like normal. That's when he notices another thing. On his Pokemon team page, you click on it, and he has his starter Pokemon, but next to that he's got a Pokemon just simply called Ghost. His character sprite is the same as the ghosts that are in Pokemon Tower, the ghosts of Marowak. And it's got one move, Curse. It only has one PP, and it just kind of seems like pretty base stuff. Like, Ghost is only level one. Um, it's just curious, I guess would be the best way to put it. Upon using the move Curse, the screen goes black. You hear the defending Pokemon's cry as it's kind of like pitched down and sounds like a weird cry. Like, it's just very extended past what it usually is. Almost like something was, was happening to the Pokemon itself. After using the move and the opposing Pokemon fainting, our player notices that the normal HUD layout where it would have the Pokeballs up in the top corner of the opposing team and then yours in the bottom right, he notices that on the opposing team, he has one less Pokemon, or Pokeball now. Does that mean that, like, Curse killed... Pokemon? After the opposing Pokemon seemingly dies, the ending of the fight goes normally, until it shows the combat box once again on your opposing trainer. If you select run, the fight ends like normal. Screen fades, fight ends, whatever. But if you use curse again, the screen fades, the fight ends, and the opposing trainer's sprite is gone. Leaving the area and returning, there's a gravestone in place of where the the opposing Pokemon trainer was. The move Curse wasn't usable in all instances of the game, though. It would fail against the ghosts of Pokemon Tower, as well as the trainers that you had to fight again. However, you would be able to use it on them for the last fight that you had against them. 
Our player figured this was the gimmick of the game to prevent you from essentially softlocking yourself and ruining the experience. Because Curse made the game so easy, our player just used it throughout the whole game. The game changes drastically after defeating the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of Ghost, his starter, and a couple HM donkeys, the screen cuts to black. Many years later is the only thing that shows on the screen. It then cuts to Lavender Town, where there's an old man standing amongst the gravestones. Our player realizes that this is his character. This character moves at half the speed of the normal character and has no Pokemon on his team. Even Ghost, who before couldn't even be put in the PC, was not there. The world's completely empty, except for the tombstones of the trainers that you cursed along the journey. Could go basically anywhere on the map that didn't require HMs. Anywhere he went, though, the Lavender Town music played on a continuous loop in the background. After wandering for a while, our player finds that the bush that normally blocks the path outside Diglett's cave is no longer there, which allows you to pass through and head on back to Pallet Town. He goes back to his house and stands right on the tile that this whole game started on, and it cuts to black. A sprite of a Caterpie appears, then a Weedle, and then a Pidgey. And our player slowly realizes that these are all the Pokemon that he's cursed. After the end of the rival team, a youngster appeared, then a bug catcher. These were all the trainers that he had used Curse on. Through all of this, the Lavender Town theme is still playing, but it's slowly decreasing in pitch, when finally it's little more than a demonic rumble. One more cut to black, and then the battle screen appears. His character sprite now that of an old man, similar to the man that teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City at the beginning of the game. Ghost is now your opponent, and the words, Ghost wants to fight, show on the screen. Our player tried to use items and see if maybe now he'd have a Pokemon on his team, but no. His only real choices were to select Run, which states that you can't escape, or Fight. Selecting Fight would immediately cause the player to use Struggle, which really did nothing to Ghost but slowly chip at the player's HP. Upon Ghost's turn, it would just show ellipses until the player's HP reached a critical point, and then Ghost would finally use Curse, and the screen would cut to black. Regardless of which buttons were pressed, the game was softlocked right here. Turning off the game and back on would show that only new game was selectable. The game had completely erased his save. Our player tried the game many different times, tried it different ways. Whether it was never using ghosts, which led to just cutting to the battle with ghosts instead of going through the cycle of Pokemon and trainers that you've used curse on, only using ghosts, etc. But the game just ends the same each time. The motives of the creator are unclear. It was never really widely known, so it couldn't have been for like monetary gain. Maybe this was the creator trying to convey a message to the player. What was it? The futility of resisting fate? The pointlessness of everything? Maybe he was just trying to troll kids by putting some really morbid stuff in a kid's game. Whatever his motive was, it is held on as one of the biggest legends in video game history. Okay, well, that is Pokemon Creepy Black. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as far as video game creepypastas go, this one's like, one of those would fill up that cartridge. Like, that would be insane if they had anything like that in this. Um, I like that because it, it keeps, keeps the game believable. It keeps the creepypasta believable because, you know, if, some, if there's hyper-realistic blood or something happens to the player IRL, he got stabbed by a dude wearing a Pokemon hat. It's like, those are good fun, but they're also st stupid. They're dumb. They're good fun, but they're dumb. Like, that doesn't make any sense. 
but this one sticks with the game's physics and everything in the game happens and can happen in the game with just what's provided. So it was really well done. I really enjoyed it. it, it it's just super, super fun, super good. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to hit that like button, leave a comment, just saying anything. Type, if you got this far, type uh, Jimmy Bob Boogaloo. That would be funny. Not really. That'd be stupid, but do it. Do it because it'll tell me you got to the end of the video and that, that's a cool thing for you to do for cool people. Yeah. But if you have any suggestions down below, leave them for me. Let me know. If you enjoyed it, again, like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and look at my some of my older content. Some of it's pretty good. Anything that's done this year is pretty good. I don't recommend going back past that, but that is up to you. But I've been technically Chris, and this has been the first episode of Creepypasta Gaming. Bye! But I have been creepy... <laughs> but I've been technically Chris, and this has been the first episode of Creepypasta Gaming. Bye!